In this film room feature, I want to break down some of the run concepts that offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey and offensive line coach Aaron Cromer used against the Rams. The Bills had a modest day on the ground racking up 25 rushes for 121 yards, but only 81 yards if you subtract the QB scrambles. So they averaged 4 yards a carry. But some of those plays were incredibly important to add balance to the offense in order to keep the Rams' defense off balance. The short passes, checkdowns, and run game forced the Rams to come out of their too high shell later in the game, and that's when the Bills began to get some of their explosive plays down the field. Dorsey and Cromer used various run concepts to attack the Rams' defense, concepts that the Niners and Kyle Shanahan use each week. But they also designed runs that play out like gap concepts, but muddy up the reads for linebackers. Instead of using guards as pullers, they used tight ends and fullbacks. While the success was modest, you will see how Dorsey and Cromer's run game concepts and ability to adjust on the fly are promising and could be the difference in the Bills' offense in 2022. All right, so let's take a look at some of these Shanahan principles that we saw in film from Aaron Cromer and offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey. First and 10 situation, top of the first quarter, first drive for the Bills. They're going to run 18-19 Zorro with a cat call. So they come out in 21 personnel, 12 personnel, however you want to declare Reggie Gilliam. They align in a two-by-two -two set, and they run Zorro here. So what is Zorro? Zorro is just a wide zone blocking. So the offensive line is going to be blocking like a wide zone run. The running back is attacking the same landmark, typically outside the tight end. And then they're going to add the surge motion. And that surge motion is Reggie Gilliam, prior to the snap, coming across the formation. And what he is doing, he's working the inside shoulder of Knox. So Knox is going to take the end man on the line of scrimmage, and Gilliam's going to help him. If that guy is giving him grief and he spikes inside, Gilliam would overtake this defender right here. But that defender stays outside, so Gilliam helps widen him, but the corner comes down and runs support. So as the wide receiver push crack to the safety, the corner comes down and is a support guy. So now Gilliam should be pulling off and blocking this corner. He's not able to get to him. He kind of chases that end man on the line of scrimmage a little too long. And that guy makes the tackle. But you can see the movement the Bills get at the line of scrimmage. And we'll look at it from the end zone angle. So watch Gilliam work the end man on the line of scrimmage with Knox. Here's the pitch. Look at the nice combo block right here by Bates. And Brown, Brown works through that near shoulder and then gets to the next level on Bobby Wagner. The wide zone footwork by Motor. Knox is kicking out that end man on the line of scrimmage. Does a good job of widening this gap right here. With that odd front, that odd man surface, you can see the bubble right there. And that's where the Bills want to attack. And they attacked it all night. Surge motion by Gilliam. Helps Knox a little too long. The push crack from Kumro. And you can see this play, if it's blocked up, if Gilliam is able to get a piece of this guy, there's a really nice cutback lane right up in here for Mortar Singletary. Now, Nick Scott is sitting right there, but there's a chance right now that if this corner, Ty Hill, isn't supporting in that aggressive fashion, Mortar can hit this cutback lane or even try to cut it up to the right and out the front door of this play. So 18 19 Zorro with a cat call. The cat call is just a push crack from the corner. If it was just 18 19 Zorro, Kumro would be locking the corner that made the tackle. But there's a cat call, or appears to be a cat call here. That means Kumro push cracks to the safety. And as I said, good movement at the point of attack by Brown, Bates, Knox, Gilliam. Just got to get Gilliam onto the next level to the support guy. And this play could have been a much bigger gain. So Ken Dorsey comes back to this play in the top of the third quarter on their first drive. 10-14 on the clock, first and 10 situation with the ball on the 35-yard line of the Rams. With the score knotted up at 10, they start in the I formation, motion, Gilliam to the wing, 2-by-2 two two set. You get that surge motion across the formation, and they run the ball into the boundary and get 13 yards on this simple toss play. But look at the movement by the offensive line. Look at how they're able to knock back those Rams defenders and reestablish the line of scrimmage in favor of their offense. But more importantly, the pitch out, the quick pitch to Singletary stresses that defense horizontally too, towards the boundary. So creases open up and Motor's able to hit it for 13 yards. 
Now let's take a look at Aaron Cromer's offensive line because I'm going to be doing this every week with him because I'm just so impressed with how well he teaches and how much he gets out of his players. So here comes the surge motion with Gilliam. You get the kick out on the end man on the line of scrimmage by Knox. Gilliam's going to help him to the support player, Ty Hill, the corner. But watch Morse, Saffold, and Dawkins on the snap. Let's take a look at Morse first. Look how quick he is out of his stance. And then, boom, seals that nose tackle right there of the Rams. Greg Gaines, really short, stout, but quick defensive tackle. Morse matches him, and he's able to seal him off. So now, watch Dawkins and Saffold. You see Saffold's quick out of his stance. And he's going to help Dawkins, but Dawkins has A. Sean Robinson himself. And so Saffold peels off for Bobby Wagner and cuts him off. But look at the power that Dawkins has. He knocks back Robinson five yards past the line of scrimmage, right around to the 30. And as Motor cuts it back, that's when Robinson is able to drop his pad level and get a hit on Singletary. But he was so engulfed by Dawkins, he's not able to bring Motor down. And Motor runs right through the arm tackle of the big defensive end and just gets another few yards after contact i just love this scheme you know the bills are running zone concept here it's all zone blocking left here wide zone to the left but they're incorporating pitch which gets the ball out on the perimeter quicker and forces all these defenders to fast flow horizontally while getting knocked back vertically by offensive linemen and the power to that left side especially Dawkins, Saffold, some of the most powerful offensive linemen in the league. And you can see how that helped the Bills get 13 yards on this play. Very next drive, Dorsey comes back to it. Second and seven situation, 4-16 on the clock with the ball on the Bills' 14-yard line. They're up 17-10. to But they do it from a different personnel grouping. So the Bills have Gilliam, Sweeney, and Knox in. And they're to the top of the screen. Ball's on the left hash, so formation into the boundary. You see them in a strong eye formation into the boundary. And they run 19 Zorro. Same thing, but this time Gilliam's in the backfield, but he's executing the same type of block, and the Bills are able to move the chains on second and seven. They get eight yards on this play. So let's take a look at it from the end zone angle. Strong eye formation to the left. On the snap, watch the end man on the line of scrimmage over Sweeney. Kind of peeks inside right there. So it's up to Gilliam to help clean up that gap and widen that gap. You can see the gap is not all that big right here. But after Gilliam gets through there, he helps Sweeney secure that block. And then he moves on to the support player, Jalen Ramsey. Now let's look at Dawkins and Knox working their little combination block. Knox works through the near shoulder to Bobby Wagner. And that helps Dawkins seal off the edge and the entry point for Zach Moss on this pitch out to the left side. Now look at the explosiveness by Roger Saffold right here. Watch him out of his stance, and it's really an important block because it's the one and only solo block here, and he's able to reach that defender. Look how quick he is out of his stance. This is why Cromer loves Saffold. Not only is he powerful, but on these zone runs, look at that footwork and explosiveness. Just tremendous blocking by him. Same with Morrison Bates on the backside. They're able to seal off that, and the guy that makes a tackle is this defender right here. And the guy that makes the tackle here is Nick Scott, who is coming from depth over here. And he's coming a long way. He gets a nice lick on, on Moss here. And this is what the Bills want to be able to do. It's a heavy formation. It's a stacked box. The defense is expecting run. But they are still able to run the ball and run it effectively because of some good blocking by the offensive line. Some of the support players like tight ends and fullbacks. And they're able to get eight yards and move the chains on second down. Flashback to the first quarter. This is second drive by the Bills. 5-0-6 on the clock. First and 10 situation. First play of the drive. With the ball on the nine-yard line, Bills are only up seven to nothing. And the Bills and Ken Dorsey and Aaron Cromer did such a good job of not only adjusting, but incorporating some concepts in the run game that resemble gap concepts like this counter tray but they're getting down blocks by the offensive line at the point of attack but they're using Knox and Gilliam as blockers and pullers rather than a guard and that presents a difficult look to the defensive line and linebackers of the Rams okay so here's what I mean so look up front you can see it's 
normal zone type blocking by the offensive linemen, some combination blocks, some isolation blocks, and they're using Knox and Gilliam to insert as those counter tray type pullers. So you're going to get a combination on the front side of this play on Aaron Donald. They're running right at Donald with Bates and Brown. And you see them work that combination. Brown gets positional leverage with Knox coming to kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage. Now Bates looks to pick up Wagner here, but as you'll see on the next play when they run it later in the game, I think that he was actually supposed to pick up any other flow on the backside of the Rams defense because as Gilliam enters into the gap, he's looking to block Bobby Wagner, and instead Bates takes him. So now Gilliam is trying to find the next color, and it's this defender right here who ultimately makes the tackle on Devin Singletary. Ty Hill had a great game, a very good tackler, had a great game against the Bills. But to me, based on the next play that you're going to see, I think Gilliam was supposed to pick up Wagner with Bates working to the backside defender Ty Hill there. But either way, this is first and 10, so a first down run. And the Bills are using zone type blocking up front. And instead of down blocks at the point of attack and pulling guards from the backside, they're using Gilliam and Knox as pullers here to lead on this counter tray run from shotgun. Just a play that was blocked up beautifully by the Bills offensive line and tight ends and fullbacks. But there was more meat on the bone here. And that's why Ken Dorsey comes back to it in the second half. All right, as I said, the Bills come back to it on their first drive of the second half. 13-0-2 on the clock. First and 10 situation ball on the 42-yard line. The score is 10-10. And this is what is so exciting about this staff and specifically Aaron Cromer. So they probably looked at that first drive and when they ran this play and said, okay, what can we do to get everyone blocked up, to get a hat on a hat? Well, this time they run it to the left side and they skill this play. They get Devin Singletary into the secondary. But let's look at what changed on this play and why it was more successful than the first version in the first half. So the ball is being run to the left side. So on the snap, Dawkins and Saffold are working on Aaron Donald. And then you'll see Saffold, unlike Bates, Saffold works to the backside defender over here, not Bobby Wagner. Bobby Wagner is Gilliam's guy. So you get the kick out from Knox across the formation. Here comes Gilliam leading up inside, and boy, does he get a nice lick on Wagner. And that puts Devin Singletary into the second level. Here comes a push crack from Gabriel Davis, and Singletary is able to get up the field, and it's Ty Hill again making the tackle, but... You can see the difference between the first time they ran this and how much more crisp this version was. And it's because of Saffold here. You can see him work through that near shoulder of Donald. And Dawkins just washes Donald down as Donald looks to split that combination. Look at Dawkins' power here. As I said, one of the more powerful offensive linemen in the league. He washes Donald down. Saffold works to Jalen Ramsey. But more importantly, Gilliam is able to loop inside and get a nice block on Bobby Wagner. Just totally envelops him, allowing Singletary to get into the secondary for a nice gain. So while the results in the run game were modest against a stout defensive front, I'm excited to watch what Dorsey and Cromer can cook up going forward. The run game has variance in its concepts, but the details to each play resonate across all of those concepts, which bodes well for the blocking because the techniques utilized will carry over from concept to concept. And this will make the in-game adjustments that much easier. Thanks for tuning in to this breakdown. If you guys appreciated that breakdown, make sure to subscribe to the Cover One YouTube channel. But more importantly, get to the CoverOne.Football website to become an insider. If you sign up for our OnePass subscription on the CoverOne.Football website, you're going to get a lot of content, behind-the-scenes type content, scheme and player breakdown, scouting reports, you're going to have access to the Slack channel, our Cover One community, where we talk football all day, every day. And you're going to access to our contributors. You're able to engage with them on a daily basis all day. And there's a lot of things that we're going to be putting out to our insiders throughout the season. So if you appreciated this content, this breakdown, you're going to get even more as an insider. So make your play for 57 bucks for the year for all of the content that we provide to our insiders. And thank you again for joining me in the film room.